So I'm sure you already know the news that Oasis are officially back together. Whether you love them or hate them, it's really hard to deny the impact they've had on the British music scene in the last 30 years, and also the impact they've had on guitar players. The last time Oasis got back together, guitar sales increased. And I'm predicting that that's going to happen again. This new Oasis reunion is hopefully going to prompt an entire new generation of people to pick up the guitar for the very first time. And if you are one of those people watching this video right now, this one's for you. In this video, I'm going to show you four really easy Oasis songs to get you kickstarted as a guitar player. I'm going to be playing all of these songs on acoustic guitar, but there are some electric guitar parts in these songs as well. If you're learning on electric guitar, you can still transfer these skills to that as well. To go alongside this video lesson, there's also a link down below in the description to my guitar course website. And that link is going to take you to a completely free resource that I've designed to go with this video lesson. That's going to contain all the chord diagrams from the lesson, as well as some information about some of the structures, because even though these songs are quite easy to play, some of them have quite complex structures. So I've listed all the structures out over there for you as well. So please check that out because that's a really useful accompaniment to this lesson. If you enjoyed this lesson, I'm also running a seven day completely free trial of my course. It gives you access to the entire beginner's guitar library for a full seven days. So if you're learning guitar, please check that out. It's free for seven days. You've got nothing to lose. So please check that out while you're down there doing that. Now we're going to dive into the four songs. I'm going to start with the song called Songbird. Songbird is a great acoustic song to learn because it actually just uses three chords and there's actually only one part to the entire song. So once you can play that part, you can play the whole song. Now I'm going to play it once through and then we'll break it down. It sounds like this. So for this, I'm just using three chords, but there's one really important factor here. We actually need to keep two of our fingers in place for the whole thing. And that means we're only actually moving two fingers for every chord change. So these two fingers here, which is my little finger and my third finger, they are staying permanently on the third frets of the B and E strings. So when I play the three chords, I'm actually only moving my index and middle fingers. Or as you may have seen, I was using my thumb, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So the three chords we're gonna use are a G chord, then the chord that I used my thumb for, which is a D sus4 over F sharp. This is a D sus4 chord with an F sharp in the bass. Now I play that bass note with my thumb, but what you can do is you can play it like this with your index and middle fingers as well. Whichever way you play this, either your index finger or your thumb will be resting on the A string to mute that string, because you don't want that string to ring open. And then the final chord is an E minor seven. So we're just playing an E minor shape with our index and middle finger, while the higher two fingers are still on the third fret of the B and E. Then we're using a rhythm that's pretty much the same all the way through. The rhythm we're using is this. So what I'm playing here is one, two, three, and four. And down, 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 up, down, up. If you can play that rhythm and those three chords, you can get through this whole song. So the song actually starts with an intro, which is just two bars of the G chord, which sounds like this. Then it goes into the main chord progression. And this is actually what we're gonna play now for the entirety of the song. So the main chord progression is gonna start with three bars of that G chord, like so. Then we're going to have a bar with a chord change, but there is going to be a slight deviation to the rhythm here. I'm going to start on the G chord and I'm going to go one, two, and. Then I'm going to go to that D sus4 over F sharp chord, three, four, and. So there is a slight difference in the rhythm there. So if we put those two parts together, The second half is exactly the same thing, but instead of that G chord, we're playing the E minor seven. 
So we're doing three bars of the E minor seven. Then on the fourth bar, we're doing the one, two, and on the E minor seven. Then the D sus four over F sharp, three, four, and. So it's exactly the same thing. And that then just loops until the end of the song. So it's three bars of G, then the G to the D sus four F sharp walk down, then the opposite thing for the second half, it's E minor seven, then you go E minor seven, D sus four over F sharp, back to G. So if you play that all the way through, it sounds like this. The next song we're going to be looking at is the song Live Forever. Now this has a few more chords than the previous song and a bit more of a complex structure, but everything you're going to learn in this song is still pretty doable within the first few months of your guitar journey. So the chords we're going to be using for this song are G major, D major, A minor 7, C major, E minor, F major 7 and then we've also got this chord that appears on one of the guitar parts in the chorus but not the other which happens at the same time as the F major 7 there you can choose whether or not you want to play this chord and this is an F add 9 this one is slightly trickier because I'm playing the third fret on the D string the open G the first on the B and the third on the high E so if you can't stretch to that chord, you can just use that F major 7 that we just learned. So the rhythm for this is a little bit more fluid. There are some times where you hear Noel Gallagher hit an extra strum in the bar, sometimes where you might hear him hit one less. So with this, you can kind of take the basic rhythm I'm going to show you, and then you can adapt it slightly as you see fit. It doesn't matter if you play one extra strum or one less strum, because that's kind of what he's doing on the record. But the general idea with this rhythm is going to be this. So if you're counting that, that's one, two, a three E and four and. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, down. So I'm always hitting the one, two, three, four and any and beats on a down. One, two, and then I've got a three E and. So notice I'm starting that with an up, a three E and four and. So where this rhythm can be a bit fluid is sometimes he'll miss out the and of four altogether. So you have... And then other times he might add an uh after the and of four. So it's kind of a fluid rhythm. You can take that basic rhythm and then adapt it as you see fit. So we're going to start by looking at the verse, which sounds like this. So we're starting off with a bar of G played to the same rhythm. Then we're going to D major. Then A minor seven. Then we're coming to a tricky bar with a couple of quick chord changes. So on the one and two, we're playing the C major chord. We're going to the D, a three E and four. And then we're going to the G and a. Uh. So there is that quick strum on the end of every fourth bar that I talked about with the fluid rhythm. That one is quite tricky, so when you're working on the chord changes for that, go through it slow. To make sure you've got all those movements fluid and then build up the speed. because that ramps back into the repeat then. So when you play that in line with the song, you're going to be playing that progression twice. Then we're coming into the 
chorus and we're now playing the same rhythm and there's a lot of the same ideas as in the verse but the chord progression is slightly different so the chorus is going to sound like this here is kind of along the same lines. We're starting off with the same rhythm, but this time a bar of E minor 7 to a bar of D major to a bar of A minor 7 and then that same tricky 3 chord bar from the verse, but this time we're only hitting the G once at the end. So it's 1, two, a three E and four and. You're just hitting the G on the end. Back to the E minor seven for a bar. To the D for a bar. To the A minor seven for a bar. Then we're going to the F major seven chord that we learnt for two whole bars, but we're actually changing the rhythm here. We're going to a straight eighth note rhythm, one and two and three and four and, but we're emphasizing the two and the four beats. So when you get to those beats, just dig in a little bit harder. So if you put all that together, it sounds like this. If you want a little bit of an extra challenge, where that F major 7 chord sits, you can actually substitute that for the F add 9 chord that we talked about earlier on. And there's actually a picked guitar line that appears on the recording which goes like this. That appears over where that F major 7 is. So if you want to play that, you use that F add 9 chord and we play the D, B, G and E strings, one and two and, and then you skip the third beat because you let that high ring, and four and, you play B, G, D. And the second bar is exactly the same, but you just leave out the last note. So those two bars would replace the F major seven. So you can either play this, You can play this. So at this point now you're going to see those two parts repeated through different sections of the song. The structure is listed down below on the link that I talked about earlier on, but in short it goes verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, which is just a verse and a chorus played together, another verse, and then the final chorus which is slightly different. This is how the final chorus sounds going into the outro. So you'll notice I was doing something slightly different there at the end. Instead of two bars of the F major 7 like this, the rhythm actually keeps going the same way it always has through the chorus. So the second half of the chorus would go E minor 7, D, A minor 7, to the F major 7. But when we get to this point, we keep that rhythm going, but only for one bar. And then what we're doing for the outro is we're just going back and forth from A minor 7 to F major 7. So coming out of the chorus it will go like this. That 
will just repeat until the end of the song. There's another guitar solo after the vocals finish, and then you just end on an A minus seven chord. The third song we're gonna look at is the track Stop Crying Your Heart Out. Now we do actually have one really tricky chord in this, which is actually the first chord of the song, and that's gonna be a B minor. This is a bar chord. We're also gonna be using an A sus two, which is like an A major chord, but you're playing the B string open. We're gonna be using an E major chord, an E minor seven chord, just like the other songs, a G chord, a D major chord, and a chord called an A sus four. This is when you play an A major chord, but the note you're playing on the B string second fret goes up to the third fret. So most of those chords are pretty easy. The only one that might give you any difficulty in the early stages is gonna be that B minor. So this song actually starts with piano. There's actually no guitar until a little bit later on in the song. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the guitar chords we now know to play the piano part. So you can just play along with the track if you want. Rhythmically, it's just gonna be straight quarter notes, one on each beat, one, two, three, four, nice, slow, evenly spaced down strums. The intro is just gonna be four bars of the B minor chord, which is gonna sound like this. At this point now the vocals enter the song, we're still not playing guitar yet, but we can still play along and follow the chords. This is where we're actually gonna introduce some chord changes. So the verse part is gonna sound like this. This is gonna be played twice, but we're still playing that straight quarter note rhythm. So it's two bars of B minor. Two bars of A sus two. Two bars of E major. And two bars of G. and then you repeat that twice. Now we get to the chorus, and this is where the acoustic guitar actually kicks in. So the chorus bit sounds like this. So now we've got a bit more of an involved guitar rhythm as well. What we're doing here is this. We're going one and a two and a three and a four and a. So it's down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. So each little three strum segment of that ends on a beat. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and we're changing chords on the one. So we're starting with the D major chord. And then we're going to the A sus four. Now what we're doing here though is we're actually changing in the middle of a three strum pattern. We're going and a one. So there's actually a quick change here. D 
to the E minor 7, to the G. So it's D, A sus4, E minor 7, G. The second half of the chorus goes D, E major, then we go to a G chord but we're playing two full bars of straight eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. So if you put that chorus all together we get this. chorus we enter into the second verse. This goes back to the same chords we used in the intro of the song but now we're playing them with that rhythm and it sounds like this. that same rhythm but we're just playing each chord for two bars. So it starts with two bars of the B minor chord. Then two bars of the A sus2. Two bars of E major. and two bars of G. We put that together, we get this. into our second chorus which is exactly the same as our first chorus and after that chorus we have a bridge section which again is just another repeat of the chorus. Coming out of the bridge we have another chorus which is exactly the same as the previous chorus. Then we have this outro kind of final chorus which is where things change slightly. So at this point we're not going to do the two straight bars on the G chord, we're actually going to go into a pattern that goes back and forth between the G and the E minor 7. So this part's going to sound a little bit like this. I played that E minor 7 to G part four times there, but it's actually played eight times. It's four times with the vocals, and then there's another lead guitar part over the top of it. And at the end, you're just ringing out a big G chord. After you let that big G chord ring out for two whole bars at the end, it goes to a really softly strummed chorus progression just played at the end of the song, which sounds like this. So 
that one has a few more changes in, a little bit more of a complex structure because there's a, that extended outro. But as I said, check out the link down below and you've got all the details you need there to get through that one. And the final track we're going to talk about is the track Champagne Supernova. Now this one is not that hard to play, but it has a mammoth structure. So we're not going to break down the entire structure in this video, but as I mentioned, there's an article down below on my website that will give you all of that stuff for free. So please use that because that will help you piece all the stuff in this video together in the form of a full song as well. Now this one has some really interesting chords in there. So the first half of this song is based around a progression with one chord played with a moving bass note. So we're going to break this up into two different parts now. So here's a run through of the chords we're going to be using and then we'll talk about each section as we go. So starting off with an A sus2 chord. Now it's really important we play this with our first and second fingers because we actually need the other fingers free for some other stuff. So that A sus2 chord is then going to go to an A sus2 with a G in the bass. So I'm reaching over with my third finger and playing the third fret of the low E string. Then I'm doing an A sus2 over F sharp. So my thumb is going to come in and play the second fret. And then an A sus2 over E. So I'm playing that low E string open. So we've kind of got this walking bass line here. So that's going to make up quite a big portion of the song, but there are some other chords as well, including an A major, an E major, a G, an F sharp minor, an F major, and a D major. So there's not actually that many different guitar parts to learn for this, but like I said, the structure for this is a bit of a mammoth, so please use the write-up in the link below because that really will help you. Now the first part of the song is going to be using the A sus2 with a walking bass line. It's going to sound like this. So the rhythm we're going to be using for this part goes like this. And what we're doing here is we're going one, two, uh. So it's the uh of two. One, two, E, and uh. And then we're hitting the E of three. So three, E, and. One, two, uh, E, and four. One, two, uh, E, and four. If you're struggling to count that while you play, just listen to that rhythmic pattern. I'm going down, down, up, up, down, down. One, two, up, E, and four. And we're using that on each of those chords. So we're doing a bar of that on the A sus2. Then we're adding the G in the bass. Then the F sharp in the bass. And then the E in the bass. So you're actually going to be sitting on that guitar part for quite a while through the song. It's not until the end of the second verse where we're actually going to change. The end of the second verse, instead of playing the A sus2 with the E in the bass, we just go to an E major chord and we play straight eighth notes as a build up into this new chorus part that we're going to play, because it's a slightly different rhythm from this point on in the song. So if we come out of the second verse into the chorus, it's going to sound like this. Now we're in the second chorus of the song and we've got a new rhythm and we're actually playing the chords slightly differently as well. So the second chorus is going to sound like this. So we're changing the rhythm here as well. We're going... One, two, uh, three, and four, and... 
So it's a little bit of a straighter rhythm than the main part that we've learned so far. So this part is going to be a bar of A, a bar of G, a bar of F sharp minor, and a bar of E. But we're going to be doing that twice all the way through, and that is going to make up our chorus. point then we move on to the bridge of the song so we're sticking with the same rhythm but we're changing up the chord slightly and it's going to go like this What we're doing here is two bars of G major with that exact same rhythm as the chorus. Two bars of A major. One bar of G. One bar of D. Two bars of E. And that's the bridge. Then we're going into an interlude segment of the song, which actually takes us back to the A sus2 of the moving bass line part that we learned earlier. We're playing that twice for the interlude, and then it does another verse exactly the same way. It's just two repeats of it for the verse, but on the second repeat, we're going back into that E major buildup. That then takes us back into the chorus, played the same way with the full chords, back into that exact same bridge we just learned, and then we come to the guitar solo section. So the guitar solo section sounds like this. So that's only a shortened version of it because you actually play that progression four times. It's going to be a bar of A, a bar of G, a bar of F sharp minor. So, so far it looks like the chorus, but then instead of going to E major, we go to F major. And we do that quick change back to the G. One, two, a uh, three, and four. We're doing that four times, and then on the fourth time, we just add two more bars of that F to G change. So if we put that all together, it sounds like this. At that point in the song, we end up back on that A sus2 part with the walking bass line for another interlude. We're playing that progression twice. So that's the A sus2 and we walk through the bass notes. We've got 
two of those and then another verse, which is another four of those. But on the fourth time, instead of going to the A sus2 with the E in the bass, we actually go to an F chord again. G. And an A major chord. So I'm going to play the final half of that verse. It's four repeats of the riff, but I'm just going to play the final two going into the outro. You hold that A chord for three bars and then you have one final little section, which is this. And what I'm doing there is I'm still playing the A sus2 with the bass notes, but I'm starting with the G in the bass. To the F sharp. F major, but we're slowing down. G, A. And that's the whole song. That one is quite a monster structure wise. So please use that resource down below in the description because it'll really help piece that one together. But there you go. There are four Oasis songs that are fun, easy, and slightly challenging to play on your acoustic guitar. You can also transfer all this stuff to electric guitar as well. Now, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, Oasis being back together is great for the guitar world. So the chances are, if you're watching this video, you might even be someone who has picked up the guitar because the Oasis reunion has inspired you to do so. So if you have done that, then that's great. Welcome to the world of guitar and enjoy your guitar learning journey. It's a lot of fun to learn guitar and, you know, you're gonna find times where it's gonna be challenging, but persevere, practice and commit and you will get there. As I mentioned a couple of times through the video, all of this stuff that I've talked about in the lesson is written out in a blog post on my website down below. There's a link in the description. Go check that out. It's a free resource to go with this lesson. And if you are looking to advance your guitar playing, you can sign up for a seven day free trial of my guitar course as well. It won't cost you a thing and it'll give you access to my complete beginner's guitar library for a week. So you can get started, learn a few basics and get yourself rolling with your guitar playing. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. Let me know what your favorite Easy Oasis songs are to play down below in the comments. And while you're doing that, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you very soon.